Welcome to New Realities. My name is Alan Steinfeld and I'm here today at the International Academy for Consciousness in New York City and we have a very special guest and, and I would say the purpose of this academy is to, what I know of it, is to start to facilitate people's ability to leave their body, to go out of body and have out of body experiences and I'm talking today to an expert in that field, Bhagna Algrechi and um, he has had some fantastic experiences. <laughs> I, I mean, at your lecture the other night, you, you were talking about these wild phenomenons of your... I suppose so. These adventures into these other realms that um, I believe are true. You said there's no way to prove it, but I've had out-of-body experiences and, and uh, these worlds are so fantastic. But is there any way we can prove that when you have an out-of-body experience that it's uh, not a phenomena of the internal consciousness, but it's a real event. Mm -hmm. What proof do we have? It's very difficult for us to come with a kind of public proof. Yes. To prove to everyone beyond any doubt that the out-of-body experience is real. Right. So, so far we have used is that people can have their own experiences. So then they certainly will see some experiences, of course. They are more lucid, more real than others. But the accumulation of these experiences will show to them. Mm -hmm. This is beyond any doubt a reality. It's not certainly a uh, physical reality, but a reality of other dimensions. So you're saying, and I, and I think it's true, there's a facility of perception. I mean, we think the brain, you know, the physical brain is what perceives reality. But you're saying, and I think my experience too, when we leave the body, there's a facility of perception that's not about exactly. the hardware. Yeah, the way we see, the brain is more like a relay station. It's uh -huh. just to allow the consciousness to control the physical body. But when we are outside of the body projecting, for instance, mm -hmm. we can think, we can use our memory, we can decide, and many times we can express, manifest, even higher levels of lucidity or, or awareness than we manifest here, usually. So the brain is not the origin of consciousness, but it's just like a relay station for it. So it's as I mean, I often say like the brain is like the radio receiver, yeah. you know, it, it, it's just, you know, it's not really emanating from the radio, it's being picked up by the radio, the signal's coming from someplace else. Exactly. So you get in touch with where the signal, you go to right to the broadcast station. Exactly. And this is exactly what we call consciousness. So consciousness for us is not only the state uh -huh. of being aware, mm -hmm. is what many, people's would, many people would call the soul or the spirit. So our real identity, what we really are. And this is something that goes beyond space and time and gender, many of these you know, tags, many, many of these limitations we have mm -hmm. here. But we're here in the body for some purpose. I mean, yeah. we're, we are consciousness, and we're also, well, there's something for us to do here in the physical realm. I think, and yes. it's also it's to learn. It's to learn, but why do? But but you know, we're also learning when we leave the body. Yes. So what makes this place, besides it being so simple and it's so so three D? As I said before, you and you like it, so boring sometimes. <laughs> well, it seems, according to Wagner here, that this dimension is the simplest. You know, it's very very basic, and there's realms and realms and yeah. realms of. And and the way we see. Mm -hmm. is that the physical life here acts in a way like a school. Mm -hmm. So when we go to a school, we don't have uh, that big uh, uh, manifestation of uh, freedom, for instance. You are a little bit squared there, there is discipline, there is time. But anyway, that condition optimizes the learning for most of the people. Mm -hmm. I cannot say that would work for everyone, mm -hmm. but helps in many different ways. So being inside of the body specifies a lot of the kind of things we will learn and can learn. So from life to life, we have this what we call existential program, mm -hmm. our life task, our life mission. So we many times design the, the main uh, points, the main targets for the accomplishments for this present life we are in now. Right, and then we have this other amazing life that is so fantastic. I mean, you were using terms the other day that I know I've been around metaphysics. That I, I never heard the psychosoma, the yeah. somatic fusion, the para ecology, yeah. para technology. I mean, 
I think it's great because you're inventing a vocabulary for these higher states of consciousness. And we're then being able to, to rec once we have a vocabulary, we can then exchange exactly. more uh, understanding of our experience. Yes, so it's, it's true. valuable. Yeah, sometimes people even think that our vocabulary is a little too much, a little extreme. But we know when we can pack a lot of knowledge in a single word, mm -hmm. like for instance, para-ecology. Yeah, explain. Anyone it. hearing that will think para. Para means beyond, other dimension. Ecology, like the science that studies us, the relation between living beings and the environment. But when we use this, this expression, environment, mm -hmm. we think of this physical, intraphysical life here. But what about the environment of other dimensions? Because not only with me, but many other people had projections going to places where they could see a landscape and mm -hmm. the equivalent of trees or some kind of life forms or animals. And then anyone would start thinking, well, but uh, is there a cycle of life and uh, death and birth here? How do these things evolve? How do they relate to each other? Are there natural phenomena, uh, sun, the stars in the sky, things like this? And what we see is that there is such a big variety of dimensions, mm -hmm. so different from each other. It's very difficult for us to map, to catalog all these different levels of reality. I mean, when I've had antibody experiences, it's like, it's been a surprise. So it's like, oh, okay. I'm a spontaneous gonna, one. Yes, I can go through the wall. But when you have it, it seems like you can actually consciously do that, right? Yes, but not always. Not always. Sometimes we, because we describe some of these experiences, people think that we always, or I always, can control all the experience I have. No, it's not the case. Many times I have spontaneous projections, as you uh -huh. just have or had. I just go to sleep and then suddenly I find myself outside of my body. But many times, yes, I can control at least partially mm -hmm. uh, the target, where I go. But once you are outside of the body, very lucid, very conscious, and then you have 100% control. But that's the thing I think about you and the experience. It's like I, I get the feeling once you get out of the body, you say, oh, here I am again, right? Yeah. You say that. It's, yes. For me, it's like oh my God, what's happening? Oh, that's right. I'm out of the body. But and fear many times is a big problem there. Well, the first couple of times, but I never had fear when I was in my body. I just said, oh, I'm trying to remember. What do you do? But like for you, it's like, here you are again. What adventure can you have? Yes, is that what yes, you say? Yes, exactly. And, and I think this uh, ha happened because I started having projections, out of body experience, mm -hmm. when I was still very young. Uh -huh. I was about 10 years old when I started having them spontaneously. And I think when we start the projections being very young, mm -hmm. because we have less of these brainwashings and conditionings, impositions of some ideas, it's a lot easier for us to take these experiences mm -hmm. as natural. So in fact, I used it to go to my bed, to relax and try to sleep. I didn't know any technique to leave my body, but I wished for those experiences. I, mm -hmm. I, I remember thinking, I want to have that experience again. I want to have that experience again. I was using some form of mental saturation mm -hmm. technique in a very, you know, instinctive way without any specific training, but many times worked. And then you did have it again. Yes, and again, exactly. And, again, and then you started to recognize the experience. Yes. It took me some years until I could find other people who had similar experiences. And then I started seeing books mm. discussing mm. that experience. And then I learned yeah, that we could use techniques to leave the body. Wow. Until I think it was 1982, when I got this book from Dr. Valdo Vieira, this like Brazilian doctor. The founder of this, uh, is the, the academy. Uh, the person who proposed yes. conscientiology, yes. projectology. Yes. And, uh, projectology is the name of the science of astral projection. Exactly. And okay. conscientiology is the science that studies consciousness. Consciousology. I never heard of Conscientiology. <laughs> so it studies the consciousness, but in this kind of multidimensional perspective. Okay. What we call the consciential paradigm. So consciousness wouldn't be not, uh, not only like a byproduct, mm -hmm. an epiphenomenon of the brain, but it's something that in fact even precedes the brain, controls yeah. the brain. Obviously, so we're, we're beyond the body, yeah. we, but we also then, if we are in these other spaces, we must also still have a body of sorts that contains consciousness. Yes. What is that body, that subtle body? That's exactly the psychosoma we were mentioning before, mm -hmm. or in other schools of knowledge, they call this the astral body. Okay. So when we leave the physical body, we will immediately perceive we are using another sort of body, that is the psychosoma or astral body. That body 
Um, we can call it a body because it has a shape. You can touch yourself, you can use it. But it, uh, it would follow different um, physical laws, if I can mm -hmm. say this way. For instance, you can fly, you can pass through the walls, mm -hmm. you can go to the outer space, you don't have to breathe, you are not going to be affected by mm -hmm. the coldness of the empty space or but, but lack of air. But you can also feel in that body, you yes. know? Um, one dream I had recently of being carried by this big bird across the sky, but I actually felt this bird's body. Yes, you know? I it's mean, true. There's a, there's a sensation yeah. in that. Some sensations at that level are even stronger than the sensations mm -hmm. we have here. Mm -hmm. For instance, sometimes when you meet someone, you can feel a lot stronger, a lot more real. The, how could I say, the emotions or the psychological state of the other person. So many times when you see someone you love, that connection can be really very strong. Sometimes it even leads us to that condition I described before there in the course of having this temporary fusion of the souls. And when you almost feel, you become the other consciousness, at least for a little while. Well, you could do that in this life. But speaking of that, I mean, there's also sexual experiences yes. that people have. Yes. And I mean, I think I've had those and they seem very real as well. And there's beings out there that are probably astral beings that do have sex with humans. They, what do they call them? Um, Incubus? Incubus and yes. succubus, yes. Yes, now what's your experience if you want to share about yes, that? Yes, yes, certainly. We can have this kind of experiences, but according to our experience, what we have seen is that in most of these cases, these so-called incubus and succubus, in fact, they are extra physical consciousnesses. So spirits what do you mean by extra physical? Outside of the body. Uh -huh. So people who deactivated their physical bodies, their physical bodies died. Right. But they are still linked to this kind of very physical sex we have here. So they are consciousnesses still in need of this particular manifestation of sex. In many cases, they not so much, uh, sometimes not because of intention right. only, but sometimes because of their needs, they end up sucking some energy from people. So right. I have to say that perhaps 90% of these cases of astral sex or yes. extra physical sex in fact, our case is of some form of uh, drainage Anything. of energy from people. So we have to be careful with that. Like we would say okay. here in life, That's we right. have to pick our partners very carefully. It's just the same thing. Okay, I mean, some people aren't that experienced yeah. in that, that realm. <laughs> and here's some, you know, but tell us about, I mean, the fascinating part, I think, about Wagner is the places you've been and the adventures you have. Tell me one of the most outrageous experiences, even if you think people might not understand the complexity. I, I would like to hear some of that. There are many, but for instance, one thing that I consider very interesting because it gives us a lot of ideas is the fact that we think that if we go leave the body, we are going to meet people who deactivated their bodies with death, so they would be in the afterlife, they would be there in the beyond. Mm -hmm. We have the tendency to think that all of them would have full awareness of their capacities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was telling here in my course that sometimes you leave the body, you go there, and people don't know they can fly, they don't know they are dead. And sometimes you try to show to them uh -huh. that they, for instance, can fly, can float, can do things, and they get completely confused, mm. enraged against you because they're you can imagine they see you as a kind of, uh, I don't know, an evil being or something uh -huh. like this. Imagine if here, you know, in Times Square, if we start having a person floating and then passing on top of everyone, mm -hmm. people will freak out. Mm. So it's interesting to see that many times outside of the body, people react exactly in the same way. So in some projections, we go to, just to simplify, to higher dimensions, mm -hmm. higher realms, where those who are there are more aware than us, they're more balanced than us, so we learn, we see, we get inspired. Mm -hmm. But then in other projections, we go to other places, I would say much lower, and then people could be in a condition a lot worse than anything we see here on this planet. Right. And then they suffer, and then they are in a kind of a mental loop, you know, How just you repeating. You try to get them out of that somehow. Sometimes, in some cases, yes with the help of other extra physical consciousnesses for those other better or higher, more balanced dimensions. So sometimes with our energy, and this is a key point, these guys we call the helpers or our extra physical mentors, the good guys, they have the knowledge, they have the expertise, but they lack the kind of very dense energy that we have here from nature, from right. plants, from the earth. 
Because we are still living, breathing, mm -hmm. feeding ourselves here, we have this particular form of very dense energy. Mm -hmm. So when we are outside of the body, many times we can be that link between a higher dimension and the lower one we are trying to help. So many times through us, the helpers can really rescue one of these extra physical consciousnesses in a lower dimension through and us. bring it through us. Uh -huh. Because they are so subtle, they cannot couple energetically uh -huh. with these other ones. But then we can be the intermediate link. The helpers couple with us energetically and then we couple with that other one and then the three of us can move to another dimension. Uh -huh. And then that one, the one who was rescued, uh -huh. can be helped, can be treated uh -huh. in many different ways with energy, with some sort of psychological you mm. know, counseling. And to the person, for instance, just uh, for the sake of the example here, the person could understand, look, I have already deactivated my physical body. Mm. I'm not a living they body. They totally realize that. Yes. And this is the beginning of the process oh. of recovery. But what do these higher beings look like? What do they feel like, these masters? Like us. But, I mean, how are they different than us when you meet them? Their level of ethics. 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 This is a key point. Mm. Key point that distinguishes a lot this different extra physical consciousness. Their level of emotional balance. Uh -huh. They are not cold-hearted. No. But you're going to see they have a different sort of sentiment. So they can have, they can feel compassion, but they're not going to drown themselves with our suffering. There's people with like our... that on, on the earth. Of course, yes. So we don't see these particular helpers or mentors mm -hmm. as uh, super beings or uh, angels. They are people like us, but perhaps a few steps ahead in terms of evolution. Mm. Right, but isn't it amazing how complex the universe, how, how fascinating the yes. universe is? It's reinvigorating, by the way. And how many beings exist on yes. all these levels and dimensions. Uh, and we, we have been here speaking only about one planet, Earth, Earth. and these dimensions is still related to this. But mm -hmm. we can imagine the, the whole of the universe. We are not even starting to scratch the surface of the reality. Of the reality of the fascin of the fascinating life that exists exactly. on levels and I mean how vast is I mean have you mapped this complexity no, of, no, no. It, of it's, it's too much for just any of us I have been out of my body and out of the planet few times going to other planets some of them without any life form that I could perceive mm -hmm. others with some sort of life form but look this is just too little mm -hmm. for me to generalize mm. but the fascinating thing is because we are consciousness we all have this facility we yes, all have that yes. capacity to, to... Everyone is able to produce this. What happens to most of the people mm -hmm. is the brainwashing, the fear that prevent them from having conscious projections mm -hmm. because the unconscious projection, just the normal separation from mm -hmm. the body, happens, in fact, every night. It does. It does. It's, it's impossible for us to avoid that. It's, it's part of our... It, as you like, yeah. the paraphysiology. Okay, this good. is part of the mechanisms of our natural mechanism of survival. Mm -hmm. So we get outside of the body, in fact, to absorb more energy to recharge mm -hmm. our pranic, mm -hmm. organic energies yeah. during the night. But the thing is, most of the people, when they get this small separation, they lack consciousness, awareness, better saying, mm -hmm. you know, completely. About 9.8% of the people can have once in a while some of these separations with some level of lucidity. Mm -hmm. About 1.2% of people at least once had in their lives a very conscious projection. And what we wanted to do, one of the aspects of our IAC, our company, uh -huh. sorry, our organization, right. is to see if we can increase this amount. Suppose if we could have 10% of the people of this planet having conscious projections. Change the plan. And Completely. And change our religious views as well, because this is beyond and religion. politics also. <laughs> but, you know, people also get stuck in a religious belief yeah, about absolutely. what their soul is and what their, their paraphysical apparatus yep. is capable of. Now I sound like... With you. all these <laughs> ideas of sin... All yes, these ideas of just, punishment and yeah. all these things are big mistakes. I know. So we have to educate the people that yeah. first this is possible. Consciousness is something that's beyond the physical. It is paraphysical and we all have this facility. I think it's very important that you're doing it here yeah. at the uh, International Academy of Consciousness. We have had a lot of students, for instance, who come to our courses and they have had projections before, spontaneously. So right. they come here because they want to get a better control of their, their experiences. But many people who come here, they have never had any kind of experience before, mm -hmm. but they are interested 
Yeah. They are curious about mm -hmm. these factors. And many of them succeed in starting uh -huh. having projections. So this shows to us that everyone, in fact, is able to leave the body. But first of all, they have to understand better this to avoid the fears outside of the body, mm -hmm. confusions, things like this. And the other thing is to distinguish it from dreams because, uh, you know, I, I go more along the lines that I think I do probably project more than I'm realizing because there's a place I dream about a lot where I almost have a life there, you know, it's like I see the same people yeah. and when I'm there, I remember what my life there is and then when I come back here I only have a vague inkling. Is, would you say that's a, yes, a paraphysical yes, world? Yes, yes, yes. Many times we have almost like a second life, mm -hmm. another identity. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this kind of life we have during our projection sometimes is just the continuation of the life you had in your period between lives. Ah, oh, but it also seems like a parallel life. Yeah. Like I'm back and forth. And there was a teacher I had who started his spiritual evolution by first going out of his body and then being um, freaked out by that, but then wanting to do it and focusing just on that. And then he says he was able to do that and then to do it at will. And then when you build up enough of this astral body, you can even take your physical body to where you project your consciousness to. Have, have you had that kind of experience? No, I have never had that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have heard, we have studied yeah. some cases when people really, they can have a form of a para teleportation. So yeah. the body can disappear from here, appear in another place. Mm -hmm. But at least to the point we, we have seen is between one positioning this space, mm -hmm. so our planet and another one. Mm -hmm. But I have heard of this idea of taking the physical body with us to another level, another mm -hmm. dimension. Yeah. We haven't seen this kind of situation so far. Mm -hmm. But it's a possibility. Right. What we think is, what, what is the big deal of bringing the body with us? Because if we are not a reality that doesn't need the physical body. Well, the big deal, I think, is what Hermes says, to be the master of the body, mind, and spirit. So you, you sort of own the power of this dimension, and you've learned the lesson of this dimension. You complete your education, yes, let's say. Yes, yes. And then do, you graduate. You graduate, <laughs> but you graduate with a diploma, which is your body. Uh -huh. So you can then manifest on all levels of consciousness anytime you want in the physical. So it doesn't have to be paraphysical. You can, you can take your consciousness, because mm -hmm. consciousness is what makes this body, and then you can yeah. use it at will. Perhaps what would relate it to this yeah. is a big chapter we have in Conscientiology, that is the study of uh, energies or bioenergies, prana, chi, mm -hmm. because the, the vehicle, the connection between the consciousness, something non-physical and the physical life, is this thing we call bioenergy. So we talk a lot about energy being used to heal someone, mm -hmm. or sometimes we use energy to defend ourselves against some sort of mental energies of a specific place. But we think that the key to have more projections and to improve a lot our physical life here is mastering, controlling better this kind of energy. So for instance, we could go to a natural site and then absorb more energy to replenish ourselves. Mm -hmm. Or we could use a specific control of our energy that we call the vibrational state in which we increase the frequency, the harmonics of our energies and then this releases the psychosoma and then help us not only to have the projection per se, the mm -hmm. detachment, mm -hmm. but also to have more awareness, more lucidity during the projection because taking the psychosoma out of the body is not something difficult. Right. The challenge yeah. is to have the highest level possible of lucidity during the projection. Mm. This is the key. And then the third one is when we come back to have a recollection as complete as possible. Right. So how do we uh, make clear the lucidity? What's the best way to practice and to remind ourselves, hey, it's happening? First of all is control of our emotions. Mm -hmm. We are usually too emotional, too mm -hmm. much. So when we get outside of the body, sometimes at the beginning we fear Anything, just anything. So this can block our lucidity. And then later on, our second challenge mm -hmm. is to control the euphoria. Mm -hmm. Euphoria usually is more of a problem than the fear. Because once you become very euphoric, mm -hmm. usually you return to the physical body. And you can be a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. And then the control of the energies we were discussing before is another way of increasing our level of lucidity. Mm -hmm. But I would say the key point is to have uh, um, an open mind, yeah. a very flexible mind. 
because we have the natural tendency, almost unavoidable, to go to other dimensions, but still bringing our conditionings, our mind frames, and then we want to see things in other dimensions. The same way they are here. And some other uh, societies or some other communities, they surprise us deeply. Mm. We see things that we had never seen before, or they give us ideas that sometimes are even hard for us to bring back to our physical brain because not used to that. Mm -hmm. So in my course, I don't know if you remember, I was giving this example that some projections are like this theoretical possibility of us going there to the Amazon, taking one of the Indians there and putting this guy in the next space shuttle mission. Uh -huh. And then when the guy gets back to his or her tribe, what be the way he or she will describe so the experience take, he had? You're saying it's like taking a primitive person and bringing him into this, this, this world of computers and all that. Exactly. Or space and, yes. and it's like, that's you're saying, it's like us going to these other spaces. We exactly. have no idea what to make of these Lack places. of vocabulary. Right. And, and context. Exactly. So the idea is to first develop this understanding of who we are as consciousness and develop the lucidity and the clarity and the calm evenness. Yes, and then this brings us to a condition, a state that we study a lot, or at least we try to, that we call is the concept of a conscientious maturity, maturity of the consciousness. Because we can talk about maturity of the physical body, maturity of our psychological aspects, emotional one, things like this. But what about the maturity of the consciousness per se? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can recognize some examples of this because many times you see, for instance, a very young child, many times is more mature than his or her parents. It's the age of the soul, they say. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly another way of, uh, mm -hmm. of stating this. So the Autobot experience is one of the ways of helping us to achieve this higher level of uh, conscientious maturity. So then we become uh, uh, more settled, a little bit more serene, we have a better understanding of, of life, we wouldn't get into despair so easily, mm -hmm. we have uh, more ethics, we are more compassionate so we want to help more other people. In a way, it's a little bit of uh, what happens to people when they have the near-death experience. It is just one projection, it's usually a traumatic one, mm -hmm. but later on the person we will have a completely different way of seeing life mm -hmm. without fear of dying, with uh, more responsibility for actions or for omissions. Mm -hmm. So if one experience, traumatic one, can bring so much of a personal growth, you can imagine a lifetime of projections. Absolutely. I think this should be something children are educated with. And not only that, it's your organization is developing a science. It's yes. becoming, and that's very important. This is truly noetic science, the science of the mind. Exactly. And uh, it should be um, studied. It should be um, funded and analyzed yeah. and, and, and shown what the real human being is capable of. I mean, in Egypt, for instance, they had this science. You know about that science yes. of the Ka and the Ba and the halls of Admenti and, and where these the pharaohs themselves would learn to do this certain practice. Yes, even leaving the body, yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was part of that yeah. whole society, I think, there. So why can't we bring this into our society? Absolutely. And this is one of the most difficult challenges we have here. Because studying this, sometimes some people think, for instance, the typical New Age person would say, but you are too scientific for me. You are too much squared and straight. When we, we see in a different way. And then religious people will think that we are breaking all the previous, you know, how could I say, all the f mental frames they create. But for the typical intraphysical conventional science, we are just you no know, pseudoscience. We are just, as they say, we would be using science just to give, give more credibility to what we do. But in fact, it's not the case. We start our course, our activities saying, don't believe in anything, not even in what we are using here. So it's a kind of skepticism. Mm -hmm. But at least we give room for people to have their own experiences. Mm. Because we know it's very difficult to prove these kind of things. But look, we don't need to prove people have dreams. Mm -hmm. Why? Because most of the people have them. It's right. very difficult to prove in a very typical laboratory experiment that people dream. Yeah. And nobody cares about that. Why? Because most of us can recognize our dreams, so I can relate to the, the ones you describe. It's the same in our case. If we could have, as I said, 10% of the people having projections, we wouldn't need to prove this anymore. Right. And then we would go to the other step that would be 
discussing what can we do with our projections? Mm -hmm. How can we use this for our growth, for the improvement of the rest of the, so of the society? Mm -hmm. One of the fields we study a lot on this is the way we could improve some particular sciences with the about experience. Right. Astronomy, astrophysics, mm -hmm. biology, even for instance, uh, history. Mm -hmm. Many or most of these sciences could be improved a lot if they included the consciousness as a multidimensional thing, mm -hmm. not only as a byproduct of the brain. This is exactly why I do the program, to understand these new dimensions, these new realities of thought. And we're at the beginning now of a new science of consciousness. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you, this human civilization is at this very uh, threshold yeah. of uh, the power, I think, of the subjective experience. Science has so much been about the objective experience. And if we're telling you you can't have it, it must not exist. What you're doing and other people I interview is saying, no, there's power in the subjective experience and you should believe your own um, mind. You know, trust yourself and trust what happens is real despite yeah. what, what the officials may say. Exactly, exactly. Okay. As we used to say, society, if we use the, the example, analogy like this, is now in its adolescent yes. years. So, growing crises, you know, uh, growing pains. Let us hope we get mature as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for having me. It's very exciting. Congratulations for your, your initiative with this, with oh, this program. Sure, no, this is exactly the kind of information and people and experiences I want to share uh, because I know it's possible, I know it's true. It is. So the website here at the International Academy of Consciousness is what? www.iacworld.org iacworld.org and uh, Wagner will be probably back in New York at some point but yeah. he travels all over he's based in Portugal and there's other teachers there. yes now we are going to Japan mm -hmm. just to help the people there and next interview why don't we talk about actually the technique for getting oh yes absolutely body. yes it would be very interesting mm -hmm. thank you this is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities thanks for watching email me at newrealities at earthlink.net and check my website newrealities.net